Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today's song by Deep Purple has been recommended by a ton of you, and in particular, it was noted for its iconic guitar riff by Richie Blackmore. Total Guitar Magazine ranks this riff as number four in its list of greatest guitar riffs ever, so that's going to be fun to hear. And of course, we can't go wrong with Ian Gillen's vocals. Let's get to it! I've totally heard this riff before. It is iconic, you are all right, but at least now I know where it comes from. I didn't know that it was attached to a particular song. I think it was, for some reason, it makes me think of various movie soundtracks. So I wonder if it's just something I've heard behind in films with the placement and didn't realize it belonged to a rock song. It's a very cool riff. And it was really fun to see John playing it on the Hammond organ. He's an amazing, amazing keyboardist. But I saw there that it was in parallel fourths, which is very unusual, actually. It's kind of like breaks a few harmonic rules. Yeah, that's really cool to have it in parallel fourths like that. Uh, <laughs> a lot of times you don't want so much parallel movement unless you're in thirds or sixths. And when it gets that kind of parallel movement, it like sparks a little bit of sort of ancient music structure. So it feels uh, perhaps even more iconic because of that. Let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning. Now that I know that I've heard this before, I'm gonna listen to it in a different way. Period of time that we were there. Smoke on the walls of this one. Yeah. <laughs> I like the build. Mm, nice. The build's already, already been delightful, but at this moment we got the bass in and it was essentially doing a pedal tone, meaning that it was repeating the same note over and over just to drive that excitement and that really got me. When that dropped in, I was like, ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Something big and great's gonna happen. <laughs> oh, it's such a simple riff. Yeah, that bass is, it does a lot. This is a really young Ian Gillen too. I think this might be one of the youngest times I've seen him. Uh, it's so interesting to hear a couple different mixes of things that he's putting in this right now. First of all, the man is extremely versatile. He has an arsenal 
a vocal coloring and technique that he can bring to any project. He's just very, very talented in many ways, and I would say very dedicated in deploying all of those tools. I think he's really focusing right now on having a lot of presence in his sound, while also having some rhythmic intensity to it to kind of make it pop every now and then. There's distortion in it that matches that distortion and intensity of the guitar riff, but that guitar riff is so, that almost feels like it's more the hook or the catch of the song than anything else. So he has to come up with a line that still feels snarly within this framework, and he's doing a great job of that. There's a few other things, but we're gonna go back and talk about them. The sound is so far forward in his face right now. All right there. And he also just used some very deliberate over vibrato to make it super wide, like a wobble almost on mantra. It was a stylistic choice here. This isn't the kind of vibrato that's really even and just comes in as a relaxation of muscles. It's actually, um, it is uh, an affected vibrato. No, we all came out to mantra. Yeah. It looks like he was motioning to somebody about something with the hearing. I don't know, maybe that was with the audience. I'm not sure. But I wonder if there's a monitor on stage that was off at this point. I don't think they had in-ears for this show just yet. We didn't have much time. A faint sample in the love. Maybe a mom. We had the best place in life. It was so stupid when the flag of current place to the ground. He's got like a, a slight Elvis thing going. Like he had like a little how hound like he kind of came back in with some sound did like a little sausage moment <laughs> that was fun but the things that really make his initial intro here fun are these little he things that he's adding the da 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 da, -da he <laughs> it's just fun they feel so spontaneous and they're very infectious okay let's keep going So cool. Oh, I love that little interspersed organ right there. That was, um, it's so sassy. <laughs> The vibe of this is super bluesy. It feels almost more bluesy to me than rock. I guess it'd be blues rock, rock, rockabilly blues. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure. But it feels more like I'm in a bar in St. Louis listening to blues music than at a big rock concert at this point. It's, uh, yeah, lots of little jazzy elements, the slides in. That little riff in the organ in particular felt very bluesy to me. <laughs> Even his vocal styling 
is tending itself towards some blues as well, the way he's kind of talking into things every now and then, like, hey, hey, ooh, that kind of thing, where there's a lot more sliding into it. But then this moment was just delightful. It's like he just hopped up into his falsetto as if it was no biggie wow wow, <laughs> right? You know, in any other context, that might even be considered yodeling, the way he's just jumping between that fuller register and then the falsetto there. Yeah, so loose. <laughs> There's this thing that we talk about in opera fairly frequently called shadow vowels. It especially happens in Italian. Like I'd say Italiana, where after a consonant you say uh. <laughs> and he does it here. <laughs> it's so funny. Listen for it. <laughs> Skies uh. <laughs> the skies, uh, right? It, it's like an entire neutral vowel that is just placed after a final consonant. <laughs> Anyhow, um, sometimes we'll remove those, but a lot of times you can add them with some style and sass, and it can be a really fun little cherry on top. <laughs> Go back one more time here. I like the way the band shifts their sound right on smoke. Uh, it, it's more major at that point and it hovers a little bit, kind of like smoke. There's a haziness a little less drive right at that moment. And then on water, it goes more minor. It feels a little more foreboding. So you get the idea of that picture of the smoke that's on the water on the lake. Um, I was shocked to find out that this is all a true story, right? This situation of them being at a Frankie Zappa concert and uh, somebody shooting off a flare, it ends up starting a fire, everybody runs out of the concert, casino burns down. And that was while they were getting prepared to record an album. And and that night, while they were seeing the smoke on the water, that's what inspired the song. <laughs> right? What a what an incredible story to tell. And of course you should write a song about it. And I feel that the guitar riff has captured some of that danger and urgency, but also the smoke on the water, the harmony and melody choices both have that haze and the foreboding danger involved. Very, very cool.
was such a cool little vocal uh, tag to add in to bring in the organ here for what I'm guessing is going to be a really epic solo. Uh, I was also watching his mouth during that break there. He seemed, it seemed like he talked a little bit and then did a few things, maybe just swallowing, chewing on something. Mm. When you have those breaks as a vocalist, there are some things you can do to help yourself continue singing. One of those things is um, doing a little bit of chewing in your mouth. Um, even just kind of chewing around your tongue, it can help stimulate saliva. Some people get really dry throat when they're nervous or singing, so they'll do a little bit of chewing motion to try and stimulate that saliva. I wasn't sure if that was what he was doing. Looked like he swallowed it once at one point though, so he might actually be somebody who produces extra saliva and needs to swallow every now and then to try and keep things clear. It's amazing how much saliva management singers need to do, okay? It's very common that people are talking about how do I plan for a swallow when I've got tons of spit that's just gathering in my mouth and I need to be singing all the time. I don't want to choke on it, but I don't have a chance to swallow. Or, um, or the opposite is happening where they're saying, oh my gosh, I'm so very dry no matter how much water I drink. I'm just dry. It's adrenaline that's that's taken hold there. So uh, little things like that in breaks, they it can tell you a lot about what a singer might be experiencing, and you can also learn a lot from it. Wow. Oh my gosh, they are having so much fun. And I love the way Ian Gillen is just like letting it rip. And there's that affected vibrato again. Wow, that back and forth between them is incredible. I think that's the end of the song. I'm gonna go back and we're gonna watch that again. And we're gonna check and see if that really was the end because we might have it continue. I don't know, these guys are, <laughs> that was beautifully drawn out with that tension and that boop, 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 boop. And I just I have to say, I'm, I'm totally loving the organ solo moments in particular because I've, I've played organ and the <laughs> the little tiny things he's doing are so much fun. Um, I want to go back. The way they brought the riff into this section to establish it in the first place was also really cool. They like did just th the three notes of it. Oh man. Uh, Ian Gillen's improvisation in this moment and that whole section just really made me crack up a few times because sometimes it was like kind of painful, but mostly it was just fun and making 
It's like he was just making some weird noises sometimes and having a blast doing it. Sometimes all you have to do is make a weird noise and be confident and have fun. <laughs> That, that build into this hold. You have the pedal and the bass guitar again. He's so chill. Ooh. So bluesy. Okay, that motion that you're seeing him doing, it's like the swipey motion. That's called a glissando when you go up and you go back down. And I was... I wanted to watch again probably because I wanted to see how he did that. Um, I worked on glissandos in so many different ways, usually on pianos, less so on organs. Organs often are actually a little harder to push down. Um, so I was curious what he would choose to do. Um, I remember practicing this extensively in a WC piece that always has this glissando up and a huge chord. And I tore the backs of my fingers off so much that I got calluses on them eventually um, from this glissando. Um, you can do them with your nails. You go like that. Um, some people will do them with their fingertips like this. Um, I've seen them done with just a thumbnail before as well. But um, having just your fingertips sometimes is a bit sensitive on the fingertips or sometimes the fingers get a little bit stuck. But that's less chance of tearing right there. But if you can keep it just on the nail, um, that can be really smooth, right? It's a it's more slippery surface, so you can just go bring and it has a little bit less uh, resistance or catch from the skin. As long as you don't go dig in too deep in the keys, because when you dig in too deep in the keys, that's when you get the backs of the finger right above the nail. That's when that, uh, yeah, gets all marked up, which is not good and very painful. Um, so anyhow, he's just doing it with the uh, pads of his fingers. So that was kind of cool. And it's actually like almost his whole hand a couple times back. Yeah. It's like the whole thing is moving. Oh, it is the end. Okay, that was cool. Uh, yeah. That was epic, and I'm so glad that I now know that that riff comes from Smoke on the Water. That was like a key crucial piece of music history that I needed to know. Thank you so much for your recommendation. If you all would like to do some more analysis of Ian Gillen's vocals, I am fascinated by what he does, and you can find out more about that in this playlist over here. I hope to see you in another video soon.